Greetings from CDSS and welcome to our web chat on singing and playing music in real time. It's been very exciting to watch our registrations pouring in over 300 from 31 states and three provinces, UK and Australia. So we are very aware that each one of you here um, joining us is playing a crucial role for keeping singing and music alive in your communities. And we are very grateful for your hard work. And we want to do whatever we can to support what you're doing. So we hope that the resources from this web chat will be helpful for you and that the connections you make will lift your spirits. I'm Linda Henry, the CDSS Community Resources Manager. And joining me here this evening are Sarah Pilzer, our Director of Operations, Crispin Youngberg, our Office and Registrations Manager, Nikki Perez, our Membership Coordinator, and Katie German, our Executive Director. Please bear in mind that this web chat is being recorded and so, and we'll be posting it along with the PowerPoint on our website next week. So if you would prefer to not be visible, just keep your videos muted. So we'll start with some tech tips from Sarah. Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, just a few um, little tips for those of you who are still getting used to Zoom or if you haven't um, experienced a slide share like we're doing tonight. Um, there should be controls. If you're using desktop, your controls are along the bottom. Um, you can mute yourself um, and your video. We ask that you keep your microphone muted throughout the um, presentation until we get towards the breakout rooms at the end. Um, feel free to keep your video on. Um, and if you're on mobile, um, you can find those same controls in the upper right hand corner as well as um, uh, on the side there for switching to gallery view. Um, when, you're, when we are sharing screens like this, you'll see that there's a little arrow between the picture of the video of the person and um, speaking and also the slides. You can drag those back and forth to um, if you need to make the slides bigger. So. Um, I think those are the, the tips. Uh, one thing to note is we are going to be keeping chat um, closed during the presentation to keep um, focus on the speakers, but then we will open it up for the question and answer portion, which is coming later. So that's all I've got now. Uh, back to you, Linda. So we'll take a look at the format. By the way, since we are keeping the chat closed, um, make sure you keep something handy to jot down your questions so that you can bring them to the Q&A. So Nikki, next slide, please. Quick glimpse of the next hour and a half. We'll hear from Katie in a few minutes and then from each of our guests, Rachel Hall Ron ne and Ron Neiman. Then we'll send you off with some resources before the Q&A and the breakout rooms, and then we'll wrap it up by 8.30. So now I'll hand it over to Katie. Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's so exciting to see the participant number tick, 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 tick up. Um, we're really glad that you're all here tonight. Um, I will keep it short and sweet. I just want to, um, first, first of all, just thank every single one of you on this call. And I hope that you will pass it on to your community um, for everything that everyone has been doing to take care of their communities this year. Um, the level of adaptation and learning that happens in this past year um, is pretty astounding. And I think um, today, this, this evening is an example of, of how what we've all learned is making our community richer and how we are going to continue um, I don't think we'll ever go back exactly to the way things were. Um, and I think we're gonna be stronger for it. Um, so kudos to everybody who has um, picked up a new skill or um, learned something new this year. It's been amazing. Um, 
also I'm really ready to go back just for the record. I keep saying positive things, but honestly, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get back together um, personally. Our sector is really doing what it has really done all year what it does best, which is take care of each other. And um, I think uh, we're all feeling this rise in hope and um, with vaccines on the picture, there seems to be a light at the end of this tunnel. It is a never, it's not a black hole, it's a tunnel. Um, but it is extremely important that we all not rush back to in-person gatherings, large in-person gatherings too soon. Um, so what we're talking about here tonight is a great tool that everyone can take back to their community to really um, help people stay connected and stay patient as we wait for a critical number of people in our society to be vaccinated. Um, so thank you all for staying the course and um, taking care of each other. And I want to finally say that this program is a free community program that we provide to you, and it's made possible because of member support. CDSS is a member-supported organization, and every membership matters. So if you're not a CDSS member, we do invite you to go to cdss.org um, and click on the membership link and join today so that we can keep programming like this going. Um, and we can expand our topics to whatever is needed in our larger community. So that's all I need to say tonight. Back to you, Linda. Okay. Next, we'll have Rachel Hall. Nikki, can we see? There she is. Rachel is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a Sacred Heart group. And she has lots to share about the experiences her group has had using Jamulus since last May. So take it away, Rachel. Rachel, we need you to unmute. There we go. There we are. <laughs> Hi. Um, uh, so anyway, yes, I would just like to thank you, Linda and Katie and everybody at CDSS for making this possible. Um, I'm really happy to be able to share with all of you something that my group has worked out and, and I hope this will help other groups because I just feel like this is incredibly important that we stay connected and really part of how we are connected is doing music together, participatory music, and I feel very strongly that that's important. Um, so just a little bit about me, it's on the slide, but I started off as an instrumental musician and started singing Sacred Harp a little bit in the late 80s with my mother, who's also a singer, but uh, stopped singing for about 20 years and came back in 2009. And since then I've been really very heavily involved and I'm one of the people who organizes the Philadelphia group and I've traveled uh, to Europe and other places around the country and I also do academic research on shame not music so I've devoted a good amount of my life to it right now. Um, but anyway, once uh, the, all the lockdown started, we were devastated to hear the news that one of the most uh, dangerous things that you can possibly do is to sing music together indoors. And of course that's what shape note singers do. We tend to meet in large groups, large or small groups, we meet indoors. Um, we would sit in the square facing each other and um, our meetings, sometimes it might be a dozen people, but we also sponsor huge conventions that, where you have over 200 people singing at once and it's, it's wonderful. We sing very loud, we don't hold back, you know, and all this research that says this is the absolute worst thing you can do. So um, we started to think about how can we stay connected, how can we still be a community um, and maybe I could get the next slide now, please. There we go. So um, anyway, we started uh, trying to figure out how in the world we can uh, be a community and if possible, sing together. Um, and of course, as you all know, we can't do this with Zoom. Uh, with Zoom, the audio is very much delayed so um, if you try to sing at the same time, you end up being ho hopelessly out of sync. Plus, Zuma has a feature that means that you only really hear one sound at a time. You know, you couldn't sing in harmony on Zoom. So uh, we started to think of other options. And what we ended up doing is uh, a software called Jamulus. And what that is, um, it's a software that enables you to have a low latency connection. 
Uh, low latency means that the time it takes for your sound to reach anyone else is very short. And what we are looking for is something under 50 milliseconds. Um, and we've actually got it quite shorter than that a lot of the time. Um, and of course you can't get that at Zoom. So we've been singing together online since um, I think really the end of May is when we started. And uh, before I start talking about Danielis and singing its praises, um, why don't we just take a listen? This is very early to when we started singing and there really aren't that many people. We've done it with more people since, but um, if you could please play the, the video here, uh, we can take a look. La fa 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 la Let's go on to the next slide, please. So um, what you actually saw was visual from Zoom and I'll talk about that later. Um, and I'll say a little bit about the trumpet player too. But anyway, what you heard was uh, us singing in Jamulus and I think there were probably about eight singers. Um, there's one couple, so they're on the same computer and then the rest of us all have different connections. Um, anyway, to say just a little bit about Jamulus, how we got started, what the technology is, and then I'm going to talk about how we build Zoom in, and finally, um, just a little bit about what we're doing, what kind of events we're organizing now. Um, anyway, so we were looking for a way to connect with a low latency connection so we could actually sing together, hear each other in um, a very, not, not real time, but close to it. Um, there are a number of different options, and Jamulus is just one of them. Jam Kazam, Jack, Jack Trip, Sonobus, and there are more. Uh, many of them are free. Jamulus is free, but they're not all free. Um, Jamulus operates on a hub and spoke model, uh, meaning that you have a central server and everyone connects to that server. So your, com your, commuter, your computer is connected to a server. And then the server will send you back all the signals of everybody as different channels. And so you can see in the slide something that looks like a mixing board, like you, if you're doing you know, sound for a band or something, a mixing board, and you see there's people's names and over them are little sliders and you can decide how loud you want each person to be. So in this particular uh, singing, you can see that there's 10 different people and so I was trying to, you know, mix the, the sound so that I can hear enough of everybody. And usually you want to hear a little bit more of some of the melody singers, for example. Um, but at any rate, uh, the, the, some of the other options that we didn't go with, um, Jam, um, Jam Kazam is also very popular, but with Jam Kazam, you don't need a central server, but every computer is connected to every other computer. So that's great if you have three people or four people or whatever, but we've now connected up to 25 computers. 
and you can't make that many connections in something like Jam Kazam. You have to have a server. Um, anyway, so um, we got set up on Jamulus uh, pretty early on. There are public servers. And so if you're just starting out on Jamulus, um, you can find some that are in your area and that's just free, Everyone, anyone can try it. Um, the one thing about a public server though, is that it's like a room and you can go into it and so can other people. And so you can start doing shape mode singing and have a random trumpet player show up. And so the guy you saw in the video with the trumpet is somebody that we'd actually met just going into a public server. And it turns out he was trying to set up Jamulus for his community band. So he was really interested in sort of getting to know us and we stayed in touch with him. And so he wasn't, you couldn't hear him obviously <laughs> when he was playing along. Um, anyway, so there are these public servers. We eventually set up our own uh, server and rented space in a very high speed, high quality server in Northern New Jersey. Um, and one of the people in the band, um, Vale Koper Shavika is the person who did that. And his contact information is on our website and I'll give you that at the end. Um, anyway, it took a while to make this work. Um, and one thing when Ron and I talked about this um, and our own experiences, both of us were saying, you have to be patient. It, it can take a long time. Our first time we did it, you know, it took us two hours and we spent almost the whole time doing technical stuff. But as soon as we were able to sing, I just, I, I cried. I mean, to have, to be able to sing with other people and have it feel real, you know, it was just, just incredible. Um, so we started out with this core group of singers and um, we all can get very low latency connections. Um, some of us can even get a connection that's under 20 milliseconds to our server. Um, and there are geographical locations limitations. So we're mostly in Philadelphia, but um, our server is actually in northern New Jersey. So there's also people who are north of New York City who can sing with us. And so sometimes we we're working with them as well. So anyway, we have a geographical core. Um, but you don't have to be super close. You know, as I say, you know, we're 100 miles from our server. And then there's other people who are 100 miles farther away. And we're all close enough. Um, now what's happened more recently is that we've started to expand our core group. So um, we announce our singing publicly and we invite all shape note singers to try it out. So we've had people from the UK join us or people from California and things like that. Um, we give a, a link to our website that explains how to set up Jamulus. Uh, we offer help for people getting started, we strongly encourage that people set up a time with us to do a tech check before you come into a singing. And then, you know, if your technology is not working, it's very frustrating, but hopefully we can clear all that head up um, beforehand. Um, and so when you're singing with a large group of people, you have to be strategic. And um, if you look carefully at this slide, um, you might see there's little flags and that some of the flags are uh, British flags and there's somebody from the Netherlands or somebody from Norway and then a couple of people from the US. And so in this particular singing, it was actually centered, the server was in England. And so those people were able to sing with each, us with each other fairly easily. And then those of us who were farther away, what, what happens is that they'll just make us quiet. Um, you can even turn the far away people, turn them down completely, or usually it's just enough to make them quite a bit quieter because when somebody's really far away, it's really hard to sing with them fast. And if you want to sing a song and not really slow down, you all have to be able to hear each other very well and in a good time. So um, when we invite other people to our singing, we set up our core group, which we call the front bench, which in shape note circles or squares, the front bench are the people who sit in the middle and they are often the ones who kind of keep the singing going, keep the tempo going. So anyway, when you have the people on the front bench who can all connect with each other in almost real time, you make those people louder. And then everyone else is still connected. They're still part of it, but they're quieter um, so that uh, they don't take over the tempo. 
um, so the tempo doesn't slow down. So that, that's just a way we've worked with this. Um, another issue sometimes is even if people aren't far away, they might not have fast internet. So that's another why, reason why they might be slower down. Or sometimes people just don't have good sound. Um, and so again, you have, because you've got this mixing board, um, you have the ability to make some people louder and other people quieter. And that, and that really works. Um, and uh, I, Vail, who manages the server, told us we had over 200 singers who have connected to our server. Um, we've had up to 25 connections at one time. And then we were really the first people who started this, but there's other shape note groups now who do it, both in the US and Europe. Um, and as I said, it is possible to sing over longer distances. Uh, why don't we go to the next slide? I'm not quite sure how much time I have left. Does someone want to tell me? <laughs> Five more minutes, Rachel. Five more minutes, perfect. Okay. Um, so uh, something I think out about a lot, both when we were singing in person and now is accessibility. Um, and of course, as we all know, there's all sorts of barriers right now and a lot of things that have to do with technology and, and some things that it's very hard to get around, but I thought, well, if we can increase accessibility anyway, we should. So um, what we do is we add Zoom as visual. And not only that, um, we can pipe the music from Jamulus through to Zoom. So if you're not able to set up Jamulus, um, you can just go to Zoom and listen to it and you can sing along, you can communicate with the singers using the chat feature. The Going the sound from Jamulus to Zoom is not two ways, so it only goes in one direction. Um, but anyway, you can communicate that way. You can choose songs and say like, what do you want it fast? Which verses shall we sing? All that kind of thing. You can just type that in the chat and the people singing will sing it that way. Um, there are some of the, the barriers that we run into um, in terms of Jamulus. As I said, there's just sort of general technical requirements. It doesn't work with a tablet, it doesn't work with a Chromebook or a phone. Um, you do have to have headphones, most people have that. Um, it works best if you have a wired connection, if you can hook your computer up to an ethernet cable. Um, but you could do it on Wi-Fi, you're just not gonna get very good sound. Um, and other things that people do do is sometimes they'll purchase an external mic to get a better sound quality. It's not, it's, it's not a re requirement, but it does help. Um, so it, one of the problems we run into is that a lot of our people are younger and they live in apartments and in apartments uh, very often, if you have internet, you don't have a wired internet, you only have Wi-Fi. Um, anyway, so um, we run the sound into Zoom uh, and that allows a lot more people to join us. So just giving you an idea of what we're doing now, um, we sing once a week, seven to nine on Thursdays on our server, and you're welcome to join. Um, please let me know if you wanna help, you know, setting up Jamulus. We sing from the Sacred Harp and the Shenandoah Harmony, both shape note books. We usually have about 10 singers, um, sometimes more. And there are other groups around the country. So maybe you'd want to look for a group that's closer to you because the geography does play into it. And they also do the same. Um, and also in the UK and Norway, they have singings. Uh, we use the same structure as our normal shape note singings. So we take turns choosing songs. Uh, we say the page number, somebody keys the song. As you heard in that video, he keyed it twice because it was too high the first time. Uh, we sing the song. Um, you can't conduct, so if you've been to a shape note singing, you know that people get in the middle and they, you know, wave their arms to conduct the song. So you can't do that because the visual, the zoom visual is not low latency. So tempo was a problem, but we kind of figured out at some point that we all sort of knew what tempo things should go. So we just started singing and usually we coalesce around a tempo and if we don't, we just stop. And we start again, so no big deal. Um, and uh, we have sponsored, in addition to our weekly singings, 
We've also done a longer singing on New Year's Day that was four hours long. We take a lot of breaks. So we'll do 45 minutes and then we take a break. And when we take a break, we all go into Zoom so we can just talk to everyone in Zoom to make them feel included. And we don't wanna make them feel excluded. Um, so anyway, we, we take a lot of breaks. So four hours is not really four hours, but uh, we're doing another one on January 23rd. Um, the one on New Year's Day, we had 92 singers participating. Um, I think around 30 or at least were on Jamulus. The rest of them were on Zoom. Um, we had people from 21 states, five different countries. We had 46 people who chose songs and we sung 72 songs. So uh, there you go. That was our first big singing and we're gonna do another one. Um, at any rate, uh, we have some links here. Is that on the slide? The I links are on, on the first slide. slide. It's like, slide. yeah, Nikki, if you could go back to- Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to give you the links and- There we go. Uh, there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, you can see in the bottom of that slide and I, I believe it'll be made available to everybody. Um, the one that's phillyfossilaw.bot.nu has all the technical instructions. If you want to do Jamulus from your own group, you are welcome to plagiarize away, take as whatever you want from there, cut, cut and paste it wherever you want. Um, this is just to help you. And there's my contact information as well. All right, well, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to hearing from Ron. Thank you, Rachel. So next we'll hear from Ron Neiman in Phoenix, Arizona, the Phoenix Traditional Music and Dance group and the band, their local band is called Commotion. And this band has been working with Zoom since October. And Ron will describe how Brian Flamig and his local band, this local band has been using Jamulus for rehearsals and their progress with virtual jams and virtual dances. So over to you, Ron. Hey. Hi, uh, I, again, I wanna thank uh, Linda and Kelsey and Crispin and all of the CDSS for this opportunity to talk about this. Um, I also wanna have a little shout out for the Philly Sick of Heart group um, and Rachel. Um, when I first saw that video of the Shape Note singing, I about cried too. Um, it, it's pretty special and um, it's just really nice to be able to do this in real time with people. Um, so as a little bit of an intro, um, our organizers wanted us to play a virtual dance around June after we were kind of recovering from the early stages of the pandemic and the effects on organizations. And we were pretty isolated from each other, you know, as musicians at that time and hadn't even been thinking about like, can you do a dance versus even start with just playing together. So um, we didn't feel like being isolated the way we were that we would be the best candidates for that. So sort of turned it over the organizers to looking at groups that could do jams, you know, playing together or couples, that sort of thing that you're starting to see already. Um, we really wanted to focus on how do we isolated in real time play together. And so we went through the process of looking through the alternatives and focused on Jamulus. But at that time, we ran into a lot of problems with just the connections and so forth. Uh, to, it's a little more challenging for a band, as a lot of you are aware, that the latency, if it's off a little bit, can be really, really confusing. Um, not so much for speaking. It, I mean, it, speaking has a little bit more give to it. Um, so does singing. Uh, it's a little bit off in the latency doesn't quite get you the same way it does if you're playing a mandolin against a guitar, against a banjo, against drums. So it, it can get very confusing very fast. So we had to do a lot of work that way to kind of work on software issues that we found um, that are benefiting everybody right now. Um, uh, we did, Brian did a lot of work to um, and make some improvements in the software that fixed some really, really vexing issues. Um, in, in Jamulus, but now those are gone and you're all benefiting if you download it now. It works much better than it did back in June. Um, and we explored a lot of the hardware issues and other things, internet issues that everybody encounters in doing this. So it wasn't really until about September that we started playing. Um, 
And I'm going to gear the, my talk a little bit to the perspective of community groups and jamming for performance. I think that those are two different skill sets. I think Jamulus can be used for performance, but depending on what the size of the band and how there, there may be higher quality alternatives like, like uh, um, Source Connect now to do that. Um, but we'll see, we're, we're still getting ready to try to do some virtual performances in Jamulus and I think that will work. Um, if we could start with the next slide, the video, um, I, I want to illustrate what we've accomplished with getting a mix of very percussive demanding instruments in some ways to sync up. Um, I, I want to give you an idea that it, it is working with Jamless. We are able to make that, that work. Um, and so if you could start that video, that'd be great. Yeah, and so you can see, you can, we're able to sync up a lot of uh, very quick percussive kinds of sounds that, that can get really confusing, but then play them up to speed and, and do that. So I think we're at a point where, you know, lots and lots of people might want to reevaluate that even Jamulus uh, looked at it before. It's not quite the same as it was back six, eight months ago. Um, one thing we found, um, it's really, um, we could go to the next slide now. Can you, yeah, there we go. Um, it, it's really important with this that you give it a little bit of time. And I also, I recommend that that first 15, 20 minutes as you get a group together, socialize a little bit. They listen to yourself with the latency that's in the headphones because, um, you'll adjust to that over time. And then when you start to play music, you've got to adjust to that latency. There will be delays, um, but you can cope with it if people are in similar latency, either all short or everybody, if you've got long latencies, a, a mi try to have a, a mix of that. Um, it, it, it really helps to be roughly in the same latency range. Um, you do have to have headphones. You know, if you're trying to play this live, it'll start or without headphones, just through speakers, everybody will feedback. So you can't do that. Um, and with music, we found that, you know, we're going to get some bubbly sounds and delays and you just kind of power through it. And after a while you get pretty good at it. I also want to point out that our server, we don't have any high speed servers in Phoenix that we've found that were adequate. So we ended up using a server in LA, which is 466 miles from us in Phoenix. And our average delays are about 35 to 45 milliseconds. And we found that for the most part, that 
that works for us. So in theory, we could we could be playing with people's maybe is 800 miles away, 900 miles away, um, and and be able to make this work. Um, it does have a lot of technical needs, a lot of technical health, and I, I'm going to borrow a statement from just how we run contra dances, since that's what we do. Is one of the things is when you get in line or a set of four. You know, you need to learn to give weight and be there when needed. And I think that's true with Jamulus. Um, people have different skill sets and you'll need to have some people that can help other people. We found that um, Zoom, just doing Zoom screen share with people has been a, a good way to help them and others install and work through problems. Um, if we're really trying to be demanding about a, trying to do difficult things, sometimes we'll use TeamViewer. That's a really cool app for sharing your screen and letting other people work with your computer a little bit. Um, I wouldn't do that with everybody and be careful about, about uh, security on that, but, but it's a pretty neat, neat application for, for working these things out. Um, so it, it, it does work. And, and I think it, it works with music better than we expected. And it's really, we're having a lot of fun with it. Um, I think it's really worth it to use this um, and, and learn it as a musician, um, even though there's a learning curve to it. Um, it. It really expands your choices as Rachel's been pointing out. You, you get people that you don't expect joining in. You can find different people to play with. Um, from a music perspective, we've been finding that in some ways it's a better, it's a great rehearsal tool. You really hear yourself over headphones in a way that you know, don't expect. And, and it's different than what you hear at a band or while you're playing at a dance. You can hear some of the nuances and things that you don't always, are, aren't always able to live. Um, so it, it makes it, gee, get you really more creative about how you think about arranging and doing other things. It's it's a great tool for teaching with other people. Um, and and I think it's become a collaboration tool uh, that it, it's something that you can help other people get started on things and learn stuff. And you know, in that process, you always learn. So it's it's worth that effort to do that. Um, but but I really am, we are really finding it changes how we're we're playing. Um, we're almost to the point where we think in a lot, even after the pandemic, we'll spend some of our dance and rehearsal time just playing over Jamulus. Um, I can kind of envision a point where once the internet gets a little bit better at, at handling these things that we might might bring in other musicians virtually, put up a TV set and hook it up and <laughs> have them be playing with us live while we're going. Um, I, I think, there's a lot of different things that are going to happen in this domain. And I think uh, it's going to be one of those little benefits of, of having to work on this through the pandemic. Um, I, I think this is something that will be in musicians' toolboxes long after this time. Um, the other thing is that there's lots of ways in which this will improve. Um, a lot of the internet delays are built into just routers and things jumping around. Um, but as some of that gets optimized um, for corporations to do things faster, we're gonna benefit because this is gonna work better too. Um, and then lastly, from a technical standpoint, if it doesn't work, um, I wouldn't rule out things like Jam Kazam. Jam Kazam was not what it was, it is different than it was six months ago. They're starting to put up some servers and they're putting servers in places that aren't high speed servers from Amazon and Microsoft and Google, which a lot of us are using to try to do a high speed server in Jamulus. And you really do need a high speed server as, as Rachel said, um, it, it doesn't really work well without it. So that's one problem. You can do it on your own that causes a lot of problems. You really want to find some, some way to do a high-speed server. But Jam Kick Kazam is one, if, you're, if you can't get, uh, if you can't get Jamulus to work, that's, that's something that other people are starting to have some success with. 
and use it. Um, if you're a smaller group, the peer-to-peer -peer versions of these Jack programs, of which Jamulus, Jam, Kazam are all based on Jack, or a program called Jack, some of those may work better for you if you don't have good high-speed internet connections. It, that is, you know, just if there's two or three of you, you, you may be able to do peer-to-peer -peer pretty well on short hops as long as you're not too far away. Um, so that may be another thing. So um, think a little bit about what's the appropriate tool for your situation and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I think that's important to keep track of over time. If I could have the next slide. So um, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. I got to move something over here. Uh, anyway, um, I'd really like to uh, thank uh, our organization for the help that they uh, provided to pay for some of the expenses that we've been encountered with interfaces and other stuff. And that, that was also um, help from the Arizona Commission on the Arts. Um, I especially want to thank Brian Flamig, um, who's done some of the critical software fixes to Jamulus, um, along with many, many others. Um, and he's got instructions up on our site for if you want to try to do this on a Raspberry Pi, which might help a lot of people, um, and then for setting up our cloud server. And we hope to have instructions for how to do cloud servers um, up sometime here in the next few weeks. Uh, we're, we're writing some of those things up, and we'll have additional information up as time goes on about how to do with dances and jams and so forth. Um, oh, I admitted that that part of it. Um, Rachel gave such a nice section on on doing the mix of Zoom and jams, uh, doing half of the, or part of it on Jamless group on Zoom. I think that that's a really good way to do jams at this point, and we're trying to work through that now, um, if you get a core group, you should be able to do that. Um, I, I think you can include a lot of people in a broader session that way that makes some sense to everybody. Um, you can find our information at phxtmd.virtual, that'll, that'll have our Jamulus instructions. Um, but I really encourage you to go to the Philly Fossil Law um, server first because their instructions for setting this up are really clear, really great. They've done a, a fantastic job of doing that. And so I really encourage that as a starting point. And then you can look at ours for maybe a, some additional tips and tricks about how to make it work for bands and, and music or percussive music. Okay, with that, I think I'm finished up. Thank you, Ron. It's been so helpful to have the two perspectives, both for singing and for music. So we will be moving now into the Q&A. Uh, actually, was there a slide right before this, Nikki? It was, okay, great. So um, Sarah will be uh, moderating the Q&A. So Sarah will, you can take it away. Did we lose Sarah? I was muted. Sorry oh, good. <laughs> um, I was saying I have turned on our chat function. So if you have questions for either of our uh, panelists today, please put them in the chat and we will go from there. All right, so first question. How does one go about accessing a public server? And either Ron or Rachel, either one of you want to take that question. Go for it. Once you install Jamulus, um, you can click on connect and it'll show you a whole list of servers. And there's a lot, at least where I live, there's lots and lots of them. And um, if they're in boldface, they're public. So you just connect. Great. Uh, next question. On Jamulus, does everyone get the mixing board? Yes. Does everybody see that? Everyone gets the same mixing board. Yep. And it's really great um, in the sense that 
uh, you can mix things that are heart causing problems for you and just focus on things that you need to hear the most. So, so it's very versatile. Great. Um, does combining with Zoom degrade the quality of the Jamulus experience? Um, someone found that uh, using Jam Kazam worked better if you turned off the video. It depends. Some people have um, found that they get technical, fewer technical problems if they quit Zoom. It just depends like how fast your computer is, how fast your connection is. I don't, I have not had trouble running both, but I know some people do and you can always disconnect from Zoom if you have to. Great. Um, what is the cost of using ser uh, the server on the cloud? Is there a cost? I don't remember how much we pay for ours. Um, Ron, do you know how much you pay for Yeah, your it turns out to be like, uh, we're paying about $2 and 30 cents a month. It's actually charged on Amazon Web Services for, for um, a moderately fast server. It's running about, I think it's uh, something like 0 0.02 cents an hour. <laughs> it's really cheap. If you want a supercomputer, you can do it for about 25 bucks an hour. If you want something that will run any kind of Jamulus that you're needing, it's probably about in, in the 20, maybe two, three cents an hour. So it's not much. Um, it, we were surprised at that. It's very interesting what you can do. Um, how do you run the sound into Zoom? So it depends what kind of con computer you have. Um, and this would probably be a good one to get in touch with me um, on the side, but essentially I'm routing the sound from Jamulus to a program called Black Hole. I'm using a Mac um, and Black Hole can capture the audio sound from your computer. So um, it's routed to a, just another software called Black Hole and then that sound can be routed to Zoom. So anyway, but and you have to do something for a Windows computer something different for Windows, but similar. Yeah, I, 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 I um, have found ways to do this on a Mac that are pretty simple, um, but I'm going to working up some documents on that and hopefully by maybe the end of the weekend, I'll have those posted on our site too. Um, great, somebody asks, uh, Ron, you mentioned Raspberry Pi. Can you do a quick definition of what that is? Oh yeah, Raspberry Pis are little basic, uh, computers, they have an Intel chip in them, um, just like you've gotten like a Mac or a PC, but uh, they're 39 bucks to start and they're sort of kits for everybody to learn building computers and programming and that sort of thing. Um, so they're very simple boxes that because they don't have a very elaborate operating system, they don't have a lot of background stuff going on. And they turn out to be very fast at running a lot of this Raspberry or, or, or the Jamulus and Jack programs. So a lot of the things you might see on like, like the late shows or something where the musicians are playing together, they're probably using Raspberry Pis with Jack or some of these programs to link together. Um, so it's one way of doing it if you're having problems with your computer not not doing it. And we found that we get a little bit of latency when we run off a of Raspberry Pi. Um, not so much with the Macs. The Macs seem to be built for handling this a little better, or at least some more recent Macs. But uh, we've done that. Um, and, and we've got some instructions on how you can do that if you want. Great. Um, do you find that you need somebody to play tech director during the session or is it practical for a participant to run the tech side while either jamming or singing? Well, for us, everybody's running their own. Um, you just run your own mixing board. And so there's not, mm, I mean, there's not really any direction. You just have to decide um, how much you wanna hear of each person. But we do remind everyone that we have this core of, of singers and they wanna make sure those people are louder just so we can all stay together. Yeah, and I'll emphasize something that uh, Rachel said earlier in the talk, which is that um, people, when they first start doing this, will probably need help. And so having a few people identified in your group that they can turn to is a good idea. <laughs> um, great. Somebody says 
They're able to get an 11 millisecond ping times, but the best is 50 milliseconds for music. Do you have any suggestions about how to get closer to 50 milliseconds? Well, a ping time is not the same thing as your late, as your overall delay. Um, so you're gonna have a ping time, which is just, well, it's just for a ping literally, um, but then the amount of time it takes for the sound to get to you um, with using Jamulus is gonna be higher than that. So the server that I use, I think the ping is often like about five or six milliseconds. It's very, very small. And then my latency on Jamulus ends up being, a lot of times it's around 20, 25, something like that. Um, but I don't, I'm, um, I wish I could see which question I was. I've got so many questions here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions. The question was, how do you get, how do you get it lower than that? Um, I guess it was, yeah, just um, reconciling between the difference between the ping time and the delay, if, if you need to do anything about that. Yeah, yeah, the delay is what you're going to hear coming back to yourself. So you're sending a signal out to a server and then, then it is coming back along with the mix of the other people. And that's what you're, you're trying to sync up to and play with. If that gets too large, like, you know, 70, 80, 90 milliseconds, it could be really difficult for you to sync up with the rest of the people. Um, ideally, you could get, if you've got a high speed server in your area, you can get 30 or less and, and trying to play with that kind of latency isn't really very much problem. It's a little harder when it gets over 30. But again, if you stick to it for a long time, um, it can it can work. <laughs> um, um, I, the biggest problem we had was if we had a local server um, that was fast for some people but slow for others, then the, then we had a difference in delays of maybe 40, 45 milliseconds between members of the group and that became harder to do. So we found that moving our server to the LA, out to LA, which increases the overall delay, but it, it made it more even for everybody in the group. So once we all got used to, okay, the delay is about 30, 35, 40 milliseconds, then we were all played, we, we could play together. And, and it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, we don't really notice it too much after a while. Great. And I think that that's why some people gave up on, you know, Jamulus and some of that earlier on, maybe in the summer um, uh, is, you know, different delays between people. You really need to look at the server that you're going to do. And that's a good place for organizations to step in and think about helping to finance those and run them. <laughs> I don't think that people, you know, individuals need to do that, but groups, there's plenty of contra dance groups that could help with that that kind of effort. Yeah, there's a, a question here actually about um, how do you know if you have a high speed server? Um, you know, when, when you first use Jamulus, there might be some in your area. And one way to do that is to look around and see if there's any that sound good. If two or three or four people that try, try to do them and they, and they work, and you're getting good sound, chances are that that's a high speed server. If you're starting to hear a lot of noise and delays and break up, even though you know that server is relatively close, um, that might not be a, a good server for that purpose. Yeah. When, you, when you connect, when you click on connect in Jamulus, it'll show you a list of all the available public servers and it'll order them in ping time. So um, you can go with your friends and decide which one you're gonna get on. And you start out with the ones that have the lowest ping time for all of you, but um, you know you can hop around and, and keep looking. Um, but then later on, if you set up your own, of course, then you've got to shop around. But as uh, Ron was saying, it's really not that expensive to rent, to rent space in a high-speed server. Yeah. Another thing to do is just to join it also lists musicians that are playing live <laughs> at different servers. And so, so like if you're a musician, you know, that you can sort by genre. So there's folk and uh, often bluegrass comes under that and stuff. So you look around, you'll find people to play with and uh, try it. <laughs> That's another way to learn it and test it and see if things are working. Great. Um... 
there's a question. Do you know of anybody who's using this for bands and callers to call dances live? Not yet. I don't <laughs> think. Unless there's someone out there totally not advertising it. We've tested with callers um, and we're pretty much, I think, at a point where we can start to do this virtually. So we plan to do this soon. Um, I can contribute to that actually. Um, if anyone knows Donna Hunt, uh, I believe she has been, believe it or not, running contra dances on Zoom using something. I don't know if it's Janulus, but I was in a ladies lunch Zoom on which Donna Hunt was describing that she has recently been doing contra dances online. So if anybody um, has her contact information, I unfortunately don't. Um, but I'm betting someone in CDSS knows Donna. She's a contra dance caller. Yep, we can share out that information. Um, another question about, um, there's a couple questions. Can you go into a little more detail about why you need to use headphones? Well, yeah, that's, that's, my, yeah, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Or somebody else want to go yeah, ahead? Go ahead, Rachel. Oh, okay. Um, when you send your sound to Jamulus, it'll send you all the sound back, including your own. Um, and so if you weren't wearing headphones, then that sound would be played on your computer and it would feed back into your microphone and create a feedback loop. So Got that's it. why you need headphones. Um, the thing that is um, a little bit of a uh, sort of a rubberneck, uh, uh, Chris Carpenter and I work together. He's on this Zoom as well, and we're composers. We're multi-genre. Uh, we play a lot of traditional music, but we play a lot of jazz and blues too. And a lot of our composing is literally in the moment, whether we're working with a particular blues tune or a, a New Orleans preservation hall jazz song we're all you know we compose our own as well we're songwriters so a lot of what we do is organic it's happening right in the moment um i don't feel and zoom is already sort of a separation for that um i'm wondering just in terms of even talking around um a chord progression or something is it possible to talk without headphones <laughs> Or is that, is that the same feedback loop that you have to be on headphones to do it? Well, so you could, um, you can mute your own sound. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think you can do it without headphones. It's not ideal, um, but you can experiment. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always tell people they have to have it, but um, I think if, if you mute your own sound, you're not creating yeah, you still might, you're still probably creating feedback. I mean, you know, we yeah, both you, you need to hundreds of yeah. headphones, but yeah, know. there is somebody who has who's a professional musician who's got these incredible like directional speakers, and so he can set it up with these directional speakers so that they're not going to create feedback, but mm -hmm. he's got like super complicated equipment, which maybe you have, I don't know, but I certainly don't. Um, great, Linda. Um, how much more? We're not going to be able to get to all our questions. We will um, save them from the chat and hopefully get some answers posted when we post the slides. But Linda, how much more time before we move to breakout rooms? Five more minutes. Okay, great. So um, it does sound like we're about to have some lively discussion in our breakout rooms. Um, let's see here. Um, someone's asking specifically about using, um, they have a hotspot that they use to get their internet um, and are about five miles from nearest musicians, maybe 20, 40 miles from those who they collaborate frequently with. Do you think having a hotspot, um, would it be possible to use Jamulus with that, that setup? Well, I mean, it's possible to use Jamulus um, in a lot of different, you know, a lot of different situations, but the problem is that everything, um, like having a hotspot or being on wire wireless rather than wired and all these things just add more latency. So um, 
you're going to have to figure out how to get around the latency. And I mean, I've sung with people in England and I'm getting a, over a hundred milliseconds delay and I still do it. So you may find that it's worth it and you're just going to have to practice and learn how to deal with the latency. It's worth a try. And you really, I know people are saying this looks like it's going to be really expensive. I mean, you need to have something, earbuds, headphones or, or something like that, but um, to just, just to try it out, go ahead, use your Wi-Fi. Like don't, you know, don't assume that it's not going to work. Just try it on a public server. And then if you think it has potential, then you might think about investing in other things. But I would say just try it out first. Sarah, Tom for one more question. Okay. Um, great. How about this one? Um, are there advantages to using Jamulus over Jamkazam other than you could have more people on Jamulus that you found? I don't, I tried Jamkazam a long time ago um, and I thought it was really cool that it had a visual bit um, built into it. So that was neat. I think for us, it's so much, what we do is so much about having a large community involved that it just wasn't um, practical for us. But I don't know, Ron, have you done Jam or maybe somebody else who's out there use Jamkazam? Um, we tried it, um, but it was early on and it didn't seem to work very well. But I do have some friends that have been starting to use that. Um, they're out in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, members of the band Steam. And, and he, they're making a little, they're, they're getting a little progress with it. Right. And again, I think that's based on the servers that are available. I'm sorry, I cut out a minute. Who is it in Lawrence, Kansas? That's where I am. Oh, uh, Robert um, Rosenberg. And Alice Boy. Yeah, and Alice Boy. He's actually in Tucson right now, but okay. He's he's from Manhattan, Kansas. They're they're back. Or I'm sorry, Manhattan. Yeah, they're they're back. I think they're back home now. I, they were in Tucson, but I think I think they're back home. They're back, and I think they're actually using Source Connect. Um, Force Connect for virtual dances, but I know that Robert's been playing with people over Jeff Kazam. Oh, okay. I don't know whether it's just for fun or anything serious, but but he has used it uh, successfully. So it, it, he he was he's goofing with it. Um, Again, I think the difference between Jamulus and Jamkazam will be the, you know, it's an alternative in case you can't find servers, high-speed servers. Mm -hmm. um, it may be an alternative, so I, so I wouldn't rule anything out at this point. But I think Jamkazam um, is harder to use than, or Jamulus is just a much better program for people to start learning to do things with and easier to implement. Great. Well Go ahead, Linda. Are we wrapping it up? I think that. Yeah, I think folks are ready to start talking in small groups. Well, um, next slide, Nikki. We're gonna quickly run through these resources available through CDSS. Uh, these are three that are specifically helpful during COVID. The, um, our CDSS resource portal has just endless <laughs> resources for lots of different kinds of organizers and there is a COVID section that it contains and it's possible to add more resources to the portal. Also, we have an online events calendar that is crowdsourced and you can submit your event there. And there's a link that uh, if you are able to support gigging artists in any way through your funds or business, um, that just check out that link. Next slide. So here are six other resources. I'll run through them quickly. I just mentioned the portal, also Shared Weight, which is an online forum for organizers. And we have a grants program. And most recently we've been offering funding for anti-racism trainings. And I'm the person who, um, handles the grant, so you would be in touch with me if you're interested in that. The web chats, of course, and on our website, we have all of the web chats, um, the recordings and the PowerPoints that we have done over the last couple of years. Also, the CDSS News has 
articles that are pertinent for organizers and we offer one-on-one -on -one support. If you're having particular issues or challenges, especially during the pandemic, you can contest us at resources at cdss.org. And as Katie mentioned, one of the best ways you can support CDSS is to become either a group affiliate or a household member. Um, there are many different uh, benefits that you can find on the links there. So especially those of you who are not members, um, becoming a member, you'll be added to our database and you'll receive the messages for upcoming web chats. So with that, I think we'll turn it over to Crispin. Next slide. Crispin, yeah, over to you. Thanks, Linda. Um, yeah, so we're about to uh, put you in breakout rooms, and this is just an opportunity to talk in a smaller group. You could, you know, talk about things you're already doing in your community or things that you'd like to be doing, ideas you've got based on what we've been talking about today. Um, and yeah, so we've got, uh, are we still going for 15 minutes, Linda? Kristen, there is a particular uh, prompt here on the screen, and I would encourage everybody in your groups to choose a timekeeper to keep track. You'll have 15 minutes, and depending on how many people you have in your group. And if you have, can take just a very short time at the beginning to introduce yourselves, your name, where you're from, and your group, that would be helpful. So our prompt is, have you gleaned anything from this web chat that you would use with your song, music, or other group? And if not, share something that your group needs and see if, if anyone in your group might have suggestions. Okay, we ready to go? Yep. Great, here we go. So everybody, we're going to have just a couple minutes for uh, follow up. Take a look at the slide here. We would very much appreciate hearing from you about your experience with this web chat and all the input we get helps us to plan more successful web chats in the future. And also, so I'll be sending you a, a feedback form tomorrow. And we would appreciate if you would fill it in. And you can also request topics for future web chats. Next week, you can go to our website. There's a link there to access the video and the recording and the chat bar transcription. We would encourage if any of you are from groups that have tech folks who weren't able to join our web chat tonight, please direct them to this link so that they can take advantage of the um, PowerPoint and the video. We are waiting to see how things are evolving in the coming months before we decide the topic and date for the next one. Mm -hmm. So please do in your, um, your feedback form, please give us your ideas of topics that would be useful for your group. Great. And we welcome your questions and comments. Mm -hmm. There's my email there, resources at CDSS. And we are very grateful for all that you are each doing. And we hope that you will carry home with you the idea that CDSS is all about supporting the important work that you do. So do please keep in touch with us. Feel free to send me an email and uh, let us know, especially if there are particular issues or challenges that are coming up mm -hmm. as we move through the next phase of the pandemic. So we'll give a minute or two. Uh, next slide, please. There's a glimpse of our recent holiday party. We'll send you all off with good wishes from CDSS. Stay healthy. And take a minute just to uh, see if you see other people that you know on the screen. Waving goodbye if you'd like. And we are wishing you all well for your next few months.
And we'll be in touch. For those of you who are not members, please remember that if you join, you'll be able to hear the announcements for future web chats. Mm -hmm.